Good morning, everyone. Um, you may wonder who this beautiful gentleman is here. Well, this, my friends, is Averon Zero. And uh, today we'll be playing EVE Online. Yes, that's right. This is a very different game to what we usually play. We usually play a, you know, we don't play MMOs, and this certainly is one. So, uh, so what is EVE Online then? Well, uh, I'll just select our shit there. EVE Online is a massively uh, online blah 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 whatever. Massively multiplayer online RPG role playing game. And uh, set in space, it's a sci fi game. And it's certainly, it's a sandbox one as well. And it's, a, it's probably one of the MMOs I've played the most. I've played quite a few of them, I must admit, in my time. But this is one I've always come back to because it is fantastic. And there's a beautiful ship. It's not a very big ship, I'll start ship. Now, for the ter for you know for this series, I've created a brand new character, and I have actually given him a little tiny bit of extra cash here. Um, I've spent some of it already. I gave him an extra million, which actually there's hardly anything in the rule, you know, in Eve at all. Um, there's people that have like billions, really. Uh, sadly, not me. But uh, we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna, wow, well, <laughs> we're gonna go on the adventures of uh, Avron, Captain Avron. And uh, yeah, it's quite early, so I apologise if I'm not exactly 100% making sense sometimes. And this is pro I should, probably should have done this later, but um, yeah, it's quite a confusing game. It's a lot to learn, but we, you know, we'll go through it slowly. So uh, first off, this is our avatar. This is me. Um, he doesn't look anything like me. Sadly, I couldn't grow anything like that. Ooh, hold on. Like that. Those hair is somewhat similar to mine. A bit different. But uh, yeah, this is the character, and this is actually kind of the newer feature of Eve. It came out, I think, two years ago now. Maybe, was it, maybe it wasn't. Uh, yeah, two years now. This is quite an old feature. It's quite, it looks quite good. It's a pretty useless feature right now, I must admit. I mean, but it looks kind of nice. Mm. Ah, some good coffee. So, uh, in Eve, you're pretty much you advance instead of using experience points like in most. Um, MMOs use skills. Now, skills. So I've already got a little small skill training going on here. Skills are uh, they're a bit different. Instead of taking you know, killing monsters, you unlock stuff, you can gain the next level. You the skills they have individual levels and you train them and they take a certain amount of time depending on your uh, your attributes. So uh, let's take a look at my attributes here. What have I got? Intelligence, perception. I'm going to change those around a bit. But you have a certain amount of attribute points and you can you arrange them however you want and then some skills are trained faster depending on the attributes and so and so, you know, and so forth. So uh, these are my skills I've got and I've got a skill plan for a day and one hour right there. And what I'll be doing is I'll be working on Galliant Frigate 2 and 3, level 2 and 3, then Amar Frigate level 3, Mining level 3, Gunnery level 3 and Mechanics level 3. Now at the start, you don't have many starting skills here, you've got a few, and I did purchase two here, Destroyers and Galleon Thrigid. And I did one of the reasons I purchased Destroyers to get training right now is about three days from now, yeah, three days from now, because it's the 1st of December, uh, the new expansion comes out called Retribution, and that brings a, quite a few changes to how the ships are and the skills and all that. And right now, there's, you, there's one Destroyer skill, and that covers all the Destroyers, which of the next line of ship we're pretty much going for. And actually, I'll show you those now. Um, actually, before we get to the sh I'll show you, let's just go through this slowly, because we have to go through everything. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so, server shut down soon, but we've got to do an hour. But uh, the, this is changing into three sets of skills. So as you can see here, for frigates, I've got Gallant Frigate. Gallant's are one of the races, the factions, I guess. And Amar are the other ones. And I'm actually from Amar. I'm an Amar person in the Amar Empire. As you can see there, and um, they each have a separate skill for their ships. Now destroyers, they have one. They only have the destroyer skill. There's not like an Amar destroyer and a Galleon destroyer, even though each faction has their own destroyer. So I'm going to get now in the new version. That's going to change. So pretty much what I'm doing is I've got destroyers up to level three last night. And uh, pretty much when the new expansion pack rolled along, I will automatically get Amar Destroyers 3, Galleon Destroyers 3, 
uh, Minmatar destroys three, and Kaldari destroys three. And those are the other two factions, by the way, the Kaldari and the uh, Minmatar. I believe those are pronounced correctly. But uh, and I'll show you some more stuff soon. And we'll go into space in a second. So we'll just, we'll just spin. Hang on, spin. This is called. And uh, you see Drone Bay. I've got Drone Bay in the ship. Fitting. The ship Take fitting interface is where so, uh, you can add and remove modules to oh, fit your go needs. Go away, voice. I should probably turn off ship. the tutorial. Where's that option? General settings, I think. No, that's off. Strange. But oh well. So, uh, let's show this piece of information here. Actually, no, we won't. We're gonna show. We'll show off the market first. So one of the key, one of the big things about this game is Eve is a sandbox, and with it, it has this market, which very few games have, if any, really have it like this. And pretty much everything in here is made by a player, or can be made by a player. Most of it is. And there's people that make stuff and they trade stuff, and you see this is all the these are all the ships that have been sold here and this is the prices right so for instance the 12 ships here sold for this amount and that's actually a player who's done that and they're competing to try and sell their ships to get money from them and there's a proper market economy going on so and we, we are actually going to get to manufacturing later on so uh, that'll be exciting so anyway here's some destroyers by the way this is the Amar destroyer oops and it's a lot bigger than our ship. Beautiful picture of it. And also, there's new, some new destroyers coming along, which are cool. I'm looking forward to those. So, uh, and here's the Kaldari destroyer. Now, yeah, and you'll see as we play the game. For those of you who've never played Eve before, the different types of ships. They have like unique looks. So the galleon ships, they have kind of curves, lots of curves, and the Amar ships have lots of curves as well. And they're always kind of bluey color and uh, yeah industrial ship skills and these are all the skills here they each have certain categories it's the corporate management for the like, guilds essentially drones which I love drones I wish they were better but uh, drones are cool uh, electronics so this will be all about disabling enemy ships uh, mainly because you can disable like reduce their effectiveness in combat that's called electronic warfare Industry, gunnery, all the different weapons, and we'll, you know we'll, we'll cover all of that as we go through. But that's a rough overview. So uh, ISK, ISK is the currency, by the way. ISK. You can see all my transactions I've made. Put two skill books for that much. But yeah, so uh, these are all the skills here, the ones I've currently got, and this is my skill line. So, and. This game's. I'm going to do a slightly different format to Eve Online because on Eve Online there's a lot of stuff I'll probably do that isn't really interesting or there wouldn't be much to talk about. So uh, what I'll do is I'll play the game generally myself, and then at least once a week I'll try and do an update video or something like that if anything good's happened or anything at all really. And I'll what I go I'll do is I'll say what I've been doing in the week and I'll explain. You know the skills I've been training and kind of why I've been training and the direction I want to go in, and then I'll also uh, we might actually do something funner. We'll go out and I don't know PVP or something like that. Who knows? And you know, like that, yeah. Um, so, and hopefully, you know, if I do something more interesting in the week, say do like a complex maybe something to spice things up. If I go in a PVP room, um, I don't know. I do something new like manufacturing. I have to show off. I'll record that. And if there's anything you guys want to see in EVE Online, just ask, and I'll do my best to try and show it off if I can. Or understand if there's anything, you know, if you've got any questions to say, I'll try and answer them in the videos or in the comments. There's a lot, yeah, you know, if you don't get it the first time, it's totally understandable. It's a confusing as hell game. There's a lot of buttons here. And I'm not really going to go through all of them, and you'll get used to them as I just click on them. But yeah, here's the inventory. This is where the, my. This is my hangar in the space station. This is my inventory in the ship. And this is the drone bay. Oh, I didn't know this ship could have drones. This is my contacts. This is where my friends list and all that jazz. This emails, pretty much like mails. This is my ship fitting. Oh, we'll go back to the screen. So every ship players. The ships aren't just like set default. You get a ship as so and so on it. The 
ships can be customized to a degree, and so what you do is you have sl you have first of all your stats. You have certain stats on the ship, so they are, and these affect roughly some of the ship's roles. And you actually have bonuses. So if we click here, these are the bonuses the ship has, special traits, and you know that a lot of them have different traits and stuff. It's quite a lot of traits there. And uh, as you can see here, the picture of the ship, and you may notice these little things here. Now these are called slots, so we've got low power slots, m medium slots and high slots. Now it's different types of equipment go in different slots. So in high slots you have weapons generally, where you can only have weapons in high slots. So we've got a mining laser here, which is for mining, and a pulse laser, and we'll show all these off soon. Here we have medium slots. Now medium slots, they have, uh, they're generally upgrade slots. So and you know armor slots or uh, well, tanking slots I guess for shields so shield tanking you have lots of you put all your modules up here you want if you want a shield tanking ship you want to have lots of uh, medium power slots and if you want an armor tanking ship you have lots of low power slots and also in low power slots you get weapon upgrades so like damage ones and stuff like that and you know as we play once again we'll go we'll kind of go over this and you'll just get used to it after a while now weapons and modules they are limited by first of all size, so for instance if we look at this, go to attributes, is it attribute fitting? Or is it I can't remember. No, okay, that's just weapons. Um so if we go under weapons. Never mind, ignore that. Ignore me. Uh so wep equipment so yeah, I'm going I'm not sure what I'm doing there, but <laughs> equipment has uh, Physical equipment has skills, you need to get certain skills to use certain equipment, and skills are sort of great equipment too, so they can make it better. But they also have these requirements here. So, for instance, this requires 70 TF uh, CPU usage, and that's my CPU usage, and uh, 2 power grid usage. 2 megawatts of my power grid, I think that's megawatts. So, here's my power grid on the ship, and this is how much it's been used 19.6. Oh, I can't remember, is that how much it's been free? Yeah, this is how much is free. That's how much is left on my ship. Hasn't been used. So uh, let's quickly just put that module back on. Essentially, just do that. You can drag them on like that. There we go, it's on. And you can see it in the ship, it's like that. So we take it off again. Fit. It's gone. And a lot of the weapons have different looks. As well. So there you go. And that's how much space. So if I take that off, that will go up, obviously. And same with the CPU. Now, you want, if these get to zero, you can't put any more modules on. So it kind of restricts what type of modules you can put on. And you'll see, once again, that as we go through, you'll run, as I'm designing ships, you'll see me run into these issues. So, uh, there we go. Now, one of the good things about, well, some people wouldn't say good, but one of the key features about this game is if you lose your ship, if you die, and ship explodes, you lose that ship, it's gone, you've written it off, and you have to buy a new one. So ideally, you don't want to be flying ships you can't afford to replace. Now you can insure ships, uh, that's not insurance, it's insurance. So, yeah, because this is the new ship by the way, so you can't insure it. And if you lose your ship, you always get a, a new ship back, a new ship. Blah. Now if you have a decent ship, you can insure it, and if you lose it, you get a bit of money back. So. And that helps kind of lessen the blow. Now, Eve is a tough game. It is a, you know, it's a lot to learn. It's confusing, but it is a good game. Now, I think we've been sitting in the hangar for long enough. Mm. Coffee. And so I think it's time we uh, we go exploring. But first, oh. okay, we'll do these tutorial missions because we can get some free stuff, so we might as well. And I recommend you do. So. Um, Oh, we're already here. So this is the system we're in. That's the system. We're... Oh, should I show the map? I'll show off the map quickly. Just accept that mission, and we'll get some. We'll get a free skill book from that. Now, this is the map of Eve. Massive map. If we uh, keep going down, each one of these is a single solar system. We're currently there. Look how many dots there are. Exactly. Now, most this area, kind of this area over here. Uh, it's mostly this area, isn't it? Actually, can I do? Security status. Yeah. Most of this area here, see where it's kind of greeny and bluey, 
is uh, what is known as high security space. And you can see, this is the security rating in the space, we've got 1.0. And that means if players attack you in this space, or, you know, the police, which are NPCs, will come and attack them. And generally it doesn't end well for them at all, they usually die. But if you notice all this red stuff out here, this is known as low sec or null sec. Now low, uh, this is where players can freely attack you. And there'll be no one to protect you apart from yourself or any friends you have nearby. So uh, that's where a lot of PvP happen. And also out here, big groups of players, alliances and corporations, fight over the control of space and actually control it. So if we, uh, we can actually look at... Where is it? Um, where is the alliances tab? I can't remember. But they can actually control sections of space. And uh, they will put space stations and stuff on it. And, you know, lots of corporations and alliances fight over this. And there's massive battles and quite, you know, epic stuff that comes out there. And, um... Uh, and there's lot, generally there's more money to be made out here, ideally, at least that's what they're trying to push for. And I think that's actually the case. But then there's also another area called low sec. Now low sec players can't take control of. And it's where the security... See, see, let's see if I can find a low sec. There you go, there's a low sec. Now anything below 0 0.5 security rating is known as low sec. And this is where players can also attack you and they will get criminal kind of marks down on them but uh, you can't take over this space at all and there's generally a lot less money to be made here it's not particularly safe space it's quite dangerous space there's usually a lot of pirates running around these areas um, and Nullsec is actually kind of a lot safer sometimes but once again this is more stuff we'll go into as we play the game a lot of it's just playing the game and you'll slowly just pick it up So let's head into space. Here we are. Now, when you first start the game, you get put into a NPC corporation. Look at all the ships. So this here, this is a hauler. The ship here. Nope. So you're jumping away. You, you are a harbinger. So this is a battle cruiser. And we'll actually get into some of these ships later on. But yeah. As I was saying, people get put into corporations. So this guy, this is his corporation. This is his corp the corporation he's in. Let's see. Where am I? I'm just click it. And when you start the game, oops. Oh, I, never mind. Oh, well. You get uh, you get put into a corporation like this guy here. And we're put into this corporation. That's the one I chose, the Royal, Royal Armour Institute. And you can see the green here. This means they're in the same corporation as you. And now this, these NPC corporations, they're really massive because they've got all the beginning players and all people solo. So um. They're just like a starter corp, pretty much. So ignore those anyway. Now, so what we want to do, our mission is in this solar system. We can take a look at the solar system map. Here we go. So this is the solar system we're in. We're there. These are all the important points of interest. Bunch of moons there. Asteroid belts. You know, all that jazz. And our mission's actually in this sector. Now when you get missions, they give you a point to warp to, and to get to that, you just right click, it says agent missions, you go here, you find the encounter, and you click warp to location. Warp drive. And we will now go warping to our location to rescue a skill book. Actually, I can't remember what our mission is, to be honest. So, so, this is the journal, and this keeps tracking your missions and quite a few other stuff here. So, fly to local space, retrieve, yeah, I've got that. Retrieve your ship. I've already got a ship. Okay. Use it to carry back an item from the local armor cargo. So this is just a basic crappy tutorial mission, really. So, uh... I'm actually going to ignore that. I might... Can I ignore that? I can. So generally, when you do these missions, you get walked to a place like this. And you may notice one of these. Now, these are kind of like... Almost the doors to a dungeon. That's the way I like to think of it. Missions are like dungeons. But the problem is, if anyone finds this place, you can scan them out. You can go there, and you can actually follow them to the mission. So you could be doing a mission, and someone could actually find you out in this mission. 
and then attack you or start killing, helping you or you know stealing your loot or something like that. So we're actually just go over here. Ooh, didn't mean to target it, but okay. And this is it, the little space station thing. Just unlock that. And there we go. And once we're within 2,500 meters, we can, uh, we can open it. So there we go, we've unlocked it. And we'll head back to the base. Dock. Now this is a mission item. So it's a... Uh, you know, it's not really actually important at all, apart from for the, just turning in for the mission. So we generally ignore that. Now this here, this is a, this is an ore. Well, it's really, it, yeah. This is an ore you mine, you mine this in the form of Veldspar. And then you refine it and you get this. Titanium. Fixed titanium. Or trit as you generally call it in the game. A uh, nice abbreviation of it, I guess. Not abbreviation, shortened name. And this is most everything's got some trees. Is it, as it said, the main building block in space structures or objects in this game. And it's the most common all. And you know, we've got it just gives us one piece, I don't know why, at the start. Always has. And it's valued at a 5.89 disc. So that's hardly anything really. I'm not sure you can get anything for that. But we'll sell that after we've turned this mission in. So just click complete and there we go. We are done. We have this now. So we'll just inject this skill. And if we go to mechanics, there it is, repair systems. It's level zero because we haven't trained it. But uh, there you go, we might, should we slide it in? There we go, we've slid it in. Actually, we want to slide this in quite early on. Because this is quite crucial. This isn't, this is good skill, and you'll see why later. I shall explain to you why later. In this game, there's two ways, there's three ways for your ship to stay alive. Well, there's three methods of gate, you know, a ship fitting. The first one is buffer tanking. Now buffer tanking is where you fill all your load slots with these things called uh, let's see if I can find them. Hold on now. Uh, it's not hog grades. It's not resistance plating, it's not armored. Oh right. I just set that to region. There we go. There's arm plates. So let's just get this one. Excuse me. So this is a reinforced steel plate, and it increases our armor, the ship's armor. And I should, I should probably show you that. Well, I'll show you that now, because like, this is a combat mission. I recommend. I think. Yeah, this is a combat mission. So just quickly do that. But these increase your armor, and this make this just makes your ship tougher. Means you can take more beating before you blow up. And uh, generally, if you want to do that, it means you stay in the fight longer, essentially. And it's good for PvP usually. Um, though some ship fits don't actually use that, they do a different way. They use an active tanking way. And by the way, the, if, okay, here you go. There's armor. This is shields, and this is hull. If this gets to zero, you die essentially. But uh, we'll just go to the stud side. With those armor upgrades, this increases this, and so it just allows you to stay longer in the fight to fight, uh, which is good. It's always a good thing. But once again, it doesn't recharge. So if you die. If that empties out, you won't ever come back unless someone repairs it. And this is known as passive tanking. And the other form of tanking is called active tanking. And this is the co most common form you see when you do PvE. Now, active tanking is where you can either do shield tanking, active tanking, or armor active tanking. And essentially, what you want to do is you want to repair your armor or shields faster than the enemies can do damage to it. Or you repair more than the enemies can do damage to it. And uh, pretty much what you do is you use armor repairs and you put a bunch of armor repairs in it and just repairs your armor. And it uses CPU, uh, or capacitor, sorry. Now this is the next feature we'll actually show off now. A lot of modules use something called CPU, uh, capacitor, sorry. And that, this is pretty much the energy that they require to use it. So for instance, our Gatling laser here, it's a laser weapon, and it should do, it uses, Say how much capacity it uses. Actually, this probably doesn't do anything because it's a new weapon. But um, laser weapons and some other weapons and rail guns, they use energy. Or a lot of modules use energy. Active modules, they're called. And when this reaches zero, the module there's no more energy for the module to use. And so it shuts down. 
Now this does slowly recharge. So what you there's a you have to either make sure your cap stable it's called. And that means this recharges faster than the energy you use. Or we we'll just lock onto him so we can start shooting him and we'll orbit him at 100 meters for now. Or this is the enemy, another frigate. Yeah. Or you uh, you do a lot of management. You manage the we your weapon firing, so you can see our caps has gone down a bit there. And so, for instance, when your cap's starting to get low, you turn off a couple of your modules, so your cap can slowly recharge. You see, we're taking damage on our shield a bit there. And you can see this is his bar, so my shield he's got. This will be his armor, and this is his structure, his hull. And uh, that's a common form in PvP: is instead of making your ship cap stable, you use modules that improve your capacitors, recharge rate, and stuff. You will just balance your use of modules, and it does. It requires a bit of skill to get it right. And some people are really good at it. They can do it where the cap is just right on the edge and still keep the majority of their modules going to make them as effective as possible in combat. It's quite impressive. And you might see me do a bit of that depending on our fits. I'm sure this probably sounds really confusing and I haven't explained it very well, but hopefully you'll come to realise it as we go through the game. See, so we've got little purple lasers. And this ship here is actually a, a ship you can buy. This ship, this is the Punisher. It's not a frigate. It's not. It's an upgrade to ours, certainly. But um, we might just skip this all together and just go straight to the destroyers if we can. And this is this is what a mission is. A lot of missions are just like this. Uh, enemies come here to kill them. Now these missions, these are the early missions, so they're really easy. But it doesn't take long before they start getting quite hard. And you have to make really good fits just to you know, kind of get through them. And eventually you kind of get these mission fits. Fits that are designed just to finish missions really well. And they were just blitz through missions. You might see a couple of those later on. Though I've never been much of a, a mission fitter, I must say. Just finish him off. You see, we're, we're missing sometimes, so we're getting less damage. And this, you know, if, as we get better skills, we'll be able to hit the enemy more. And in the fighting, there's actually quite a lot of mechanics going on. For instance, to determine if we hit, we'll just look at our ship. You have to look at the angle, they look at the angle of velocity and stuff. And we can actually add that to the overview here. Uh, add tab. Actually, no, we won't. Oh, I'll do it. Is it? Actually, maybe it's here. Oh, I can't remember. They look at like, and uh, yeah, they look at the angle of velocity. They look at the speed you're going compared to the target. You look at how big the target is using the signature radius, which you can find here somewhere. It looks at your targeting resolution, the targeting, how far away you are from the target, the weapons range and stuff like that. Determine if you're here, and you know you can position your ships into places where it increases the chance you are to hit the target. And you know, all stuff like that. I think our mission's done now. Yep. Completed. Okay. So, you know, there's a lot of. Oh, what are you talking about? Do you mean we can't walk? Huh? It's not a gate here, is there? There we go. And you know, a lot of people they can you can do quite well to get into certain positions and it determines how far away you fire from, you know, and the weapons and all that sort of stuff and there's quite a lot it's a lot behind it. And we're sort of, once again we'll cover this as we play through the game. It's kind of all that jazz. Um but yeah. And this is Eve Online, pretty much. There's a lot to it. Ooh, that's new. Now you may notice here we have some stuff here on the overview. I'm just going to make this bigger. So these players, these little kind of boxes with the little gaps in them. The full boxes are space stations. And these are what are called jump gates. And these allow you to travel to other, space, uh, other systems. And you'll see those later on. So let's dock up here. That's the dock button and that's the warp button by the way. And this is the approach button. This, allows, this tells you to orbit the target at a certain distance. 
you can change the distance by right clicking instead of just, just typing in there. And the one with the eyes, you can look at the target. Let's complete this mission by the way. And we can get small armor repair. And eight seconds we'll be able to equip that. Let's see what other mission is. 500 ASK, wow. Well, we can show off jump, jump gates. Skill training completed. Sweet. So let's, uh, inventory. Cargo hold, there okay. go. No, I want, what do I want? I want inventory, it's over here. So we got this now. Actually, let's sell off this quickly. So if you right click, you can sell stuff. And this is how much someone's willing to buy it for, 5.81. If we look at the market here, what you can do is, well, how most stuff is sold is someone puts up a buy order, like this. Then they say how much they want to buy it for, and how much they want to, how many of the, this item they want to buy. And then when people sell stuff, it goes to whoever is willing to pay the uh, the most for it. Is it the most? Yes, whoever is willing to pay the most in the space station. So if we go jumps, just organize by jump. This person is willing to pay the most for it, yeah. And see, the price, the actual price we're selling it for is 5.9. But because the tax in this area is 4.24%, Sadly, we lose out 0.09 isk. But this person now has one extra trit in their. Uh, if you're paying attention, you might have seen that drop. And what these people do is they put down these buy orders, usually for a large amount of a number, and they buy it. And then what they do is they sell it back. And they sell it, and you can see the price difference here 0.8. Now, that may not seem like much, but when you've got a million, add, if you do a million times 0.8, all that extra isk. That's the, your profit you're making if you can manage to do it like that. Now, obviously, it's not as easy as that because other people will try obviously change their prices when you put yours up, and then you also you know eventually you can end up losing money on it if the, you don't pay attention to it properly or not really make any enough money to make it worth your while. Um, but and you also need starting cash to do that, and you'll we'll actually do a bit of trading later on. This is yeah, this is called station trading because it's not a bad way to make money. To, and I'll actually go into some better ways of doing that, maybe finding items. So what I've just done there is I phone on this item, armor repairer, and we'll just go off and do this mission. This is probably the longest video I do of uh, Eve, um, just because there's so much explaining at least the core values of it. And if this, like I said, if there's something I haven't explained properly, you think I've done really badly to explain, okay. please say it and I'll try my best to explain it again. So you may notice this is yellow. Now because we've set a destination of route, it lights up on your map where to go. So it's essentially, and you can actually even autopilot it. But autopiloting is really crap. So I wouldn't recommend it if you, if it's a short route, don't bother autopiloting. If it's a really long route and you want to go off and you could like read a book, you can just click autopilot. And it will just automatically take you places. But it's a lot slower. Um, instead of when you click, as you click warp, we're going to end up at zero, pretty much zero kilometers from the target. If you autopilot it, it warps to the uh, the jump gate. This is the jump gate, by the way. And these are some battleships here, nice big ships, a lot bigger than ours. I'll show you what we can we'll fly up to one. And it's what it does is it takes you 15 kilometers. It warps you 15 kilometers away from the target. And then you either have to travel those 15 kilometers, and that's a long, that's quite a long way, you know, especially if you've got a slow ship. It's a very long way. So uh, what we do, we just, we just go up to this ship here, and you can see some size differences. Ooh, someone corpse chatting. Not really interested there. Um, just put that more. Yeah, actually, that's good there. Now you may notice we have this down here. This is our armor repairer. Now if we click it. Yeah, our capacitor just jumped down a lot, and that's activation cost. And you see this bar here? Every time that finishes, it's called a cycle, when it reaches there, it will repair our armor by a certain amount and then take some capacitor. You see our capacitor is going down quite fast. Should just go around that way. So eventually we're going to run out of capacitor, I think, because I don't think this fit is cap stable. Yeah, it's not cap stable. So eventually we run out of cap and this will shut itself off. There you go, it's, and there's our ship. Poof. You see, you get that little message there. 
Now this is, there's even bigger ships than these. Ridiculously bigger ships than these. Oh, what is my mission, by the way? <laughs> what station am I to go to? Okay, that's back again. Uh, follow the steps to no neighbors. Oh, okay. So I have that in my cargo hold now. I do. So that's alright. We're gonna fly back. I just wanted to jump. Um, that's all. But yeah, there's a lot bigger ships. I can see if I can find you one. Um, capital ships, carriers. Archon. Three thousand two hundred eighty-six meters long. This is a massive ship, as you can see here. And this is a carrier. Still not the biggest ship. And we've got Dreadnoughts here. The Revelation. 3,800 meters long. And if we find our ship, if we just right click on our ship, you can see the size difference. Just fly back there. You see we're cloaked. The moment you come out of a jump gate, you're cloaked for a few seconds. So you can use that to your advantage a lot of the time. To help escape. So if we look at our ship, back there. The ship is 56 meters long. Big, big size difference there. Now, I've actually never witnessed a destroyer, a uh, dreadnought before in this game, because I never really went out to 0.0 uh, much when I played before. Or on my main character, I don't. So, uh, yeah. Never really did much of that stuff, I must admit. I was kind of more of a high secu, low secu guy. I did lots of manufacturing. Did PvP occasionally, did a bit of mining sometimes just to kick back on a, you know, I'll kick back on an evening, did a bit of mining, read a book, a little bit, a little bit, tiny bit way, make a little bit of extra isk. It's certainly not fun, but if you, you know, a nice book on the side, it's alright. I just hanged out with a few friends. But yeah, and that was my daily EU life. I do some missions. The key thing with me was the, I enjoyed the manufacturing. And uh, selling items, and you know the occasional PvP live and things up, which was nice. Let's uh, complete this. But hopefully, you know, hopefully it works for all aspects of stuff. Um. Okay. Well, anyway, I think we're going to end it here. So, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. I know this video is probably not the most exciting, but we'll do more exciting stuff later on. I promise you. I promise you. So I will see you guys later. Have a good one, guys.